Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the pristine, untouched wilderness of the Calmlands. I think. I think there's one around the, the grate here. There we go. Right, so there is one right there, Ultimate Tomato. Uh, so what I'll do is we'll continue out our day at the moment. We've got a lot of work that I want to do on this particular day before we finished. We've got the hay that we're making. I want to finish making that and then I want to start doing some plowing. But what I was thinking is the plowing doesn't actually matter so much. We can plow up this area here that we've got and um, like if, even if I just sort of mark the outside edges and then uh, it doesn't matter if we fast forward time a little bit because we're not going to be able to get anything planted. Ooh. Am I wanting to keep that? I, I, You know, I genuinely can't remember if I decided that I was going to keep this as grass or if I'm going to do cropping the same as I've done over there. I think it would be better if we kept it as grass growth uh, right okay so we got the soil composition um i think it would be better we we can actually go a little bit further out around there we'll do that maybe with the plow um yeah i don't know whether we should keep that as grass or plant it planting would probably be a good idea but then so would keeping it as grass keeping it as grass I've got the rake and other stuff for it at the moment, so like we, we've got the tools and so on and so forth for making hay, so we could do that a few times. We'll, we'll do that, we'll do that. I, I, can't rem I, I genuinely can't remember what I'd already decided. I, I probably already decided what I was going to do with this and said last time, but... Um, I'm going to bring this one over here. Like, I'm sort of thinking that this field shouldn't have an entrance up on the top end. Um, maybe we'll do... Ooh! Now, there's something that we could do. Now, I did say before that, um, like, I asked and everybody said that, no, this time you want me to play this one entirely for me. Don't ask questions. Don't put this to public vote about how I run this series I'm I'm still going to ask questions because I do like to involve you and I like to get your opinions but I may not necessarily go with what the public want on this one um, I may just still go with what I want so what I was just ooing about was I actually like the idea of, rather than just having my fields open fields like this, which I've never particularly liked, what I'm thinking is I will make hedgerows for all of my fields. Now, if I was to do that, either hedgerows or, you know, put fences around them all, what do you think of that? I'm, I'm curious what you think of it as a viewer. Do you think I should be taking the time to put fences and hedges around my fields? Or do you think I should just leave it open? Maybe just do a barbed wire fence. I actually... If I'm going to do it, I don't think I'll do like just a, a, a barbed wire fence separating them. I think I'll actually do um, hedgerows and fences and that and separate them out a bit more. Um, this bit right here, though, this this is a bit of a nuisance because what I would like to do is I, if I'm going to have this field here, I want it to go right up to the road. In order to be able to do that, I need to be able to buy the bit that's around the shop. And the bit around the shop right there is, well, I've got to buy that bit. So I would at least have quite a bit of forestry I can buy, which is 97,000. That one down there is 160. That one's 66,000. That one up there is 184. Well, actually, that's not so bad. It's 100,000, and then I get all the trees up around there, and then we get this little tiny bit of land. I kind of want that tiny little bit of land right there. That's, that's what I would like. I'm not going to worry too much about the tiny bit of land. 
We, we won't get too caught up on the tiny bit of land up there. We'll focus on what we're doing here for now. I really do like the... See, we can't get too close to the edge anyway because it doesn't allow us to drop the hay. You can see right there it's it's not allowing us to drop any material down. So I'm not going to want to be too close to the road. So that little triangle bit that's left over is not really going to make a vast amount of difference to anything we do. So I don't think it will. Because like a large chunk of it we wouldn't be able to use. I'm going to need to keep that field. We need to have a good set aside strip around the edge of our fields. And well as something that I don't know if it's still done in the UK. It definitely was done in the UK several years ago when I was um, involved in arable farming. Um, you had strips of land around the edges of fields and it was quite a common thing, a set-aside strip. And then rather than having to leave entire fields just bare for long lengths of time, it was kind of like a nature reserve, a temporary one. Um, Whereas you'd have to leave some fields as set aside and you did get some compensation for it. But it was, you, you didn't get like a, a huge amount. It would be better if you could grow crops. So what some farmers did was they did instead uh, a longer term thing. Rather than leaving a whole field just for one year, which didn't really help anything. That was more just to try and curb the amount of food that was being overproduced at the time. Um they would make set-aside strips instead, which were 10, 10 to 20 meter strips along the side of a field. And that would be left for um, five years, 10 years. It, it depended on what sort of thing you were doing with it, but it, it would be left for a number of years. And that would become a, sort of a bit of a wildlife sanctuary, really. There'd be wildflowers that could grow along the sides and, and things like that and so that was the idea of it anyway but there were a number of farmers that would go and spray their set aside strip with roundup to kill off all of the flowers because then it would stop them from sowing seed into the crop which kind of defeated the whole purpose of the thing um i think they have i say i don't know if they still do it i know that when it was still when it was happening um they did start to get a bit more strict about that. If you were caught spraying anything on your set aside strips and you didn't get your payment and it didn't, it, it no longer counted as well, which was a good thing. I, I thought that was a good thing. I, I, I never liked the idea of um, having these wildlife reserves, the, the set aside strips, and then spray, killing everything off on them. It just seemed wrong. Um, anyway, anyway, that's, that's not really something that we need to worry about at the moment. I'm going to do one more pass around this field and then we'll start doing some land work on this one, I think. Let's just move up around there. Um, so this field here, I think we will for now, we, we'll plant it, we'll, we'll plow it and then we'll plant it with grass. And we've got all of the, or are we? Oh, no, because I was sort of thinking that the bit there um, above our farm, like that, that, that bit just over there, um, that was the bit I was thinking I would be able to use for set-aside. Not set-aside. Oh, I've got set-aside on the brain at the moment. I could use that for doing hay. This bit up here, I think it would be better if we were to do arable crops on this. Now, if I bring this one... Actually, I want to go up there and I want to do this sort of sideways on. I've got to get this just right. So we'll go about here, I think. And then we'll just kind of start like that. And I'll do it that way. Let me... You know what I'm going to do? I'm just, I'm just going to do that a minute. All right. I did that. So now I've got a potential screenshot that we can use. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do straight lines up and down here. Just like this. And then when we've done our straight lines up and down, we do one more pass all the way around the outside and gather up that last line all the way through. 
some people when they do their raking in real life they're rowing up they do it like this and some people will do it slightly differently in that they'll go right up to the last row um, and then go round the field again and sort of go over the final row and just tidy that one up again. So it's two different schools of thought as to which one you should do. Uh, some people prefer to tidy up the, fin the, the row that has already been made because it's just easier to sort of see where to start and stop. Other people prefer to do it like this because then you're not double handling the material and in theory you should be able to finish the field just marginally quicker if you do it like this. It does also depend a bit on the size of the machine you're using. The bigger the rake that you're using, uh, the less likely you are to need to actually do it at all. Because if you're using a really big rake, there should be enough room on the end of the field after the last of the hay or grass whatever it is that you're raking um there should be enough room left over for you to be able to start your next row without interfering with the previous row so it does sometimes work it just it sort of depends on what you're doing um if you're using a small rake then you definitely either need to do this or you just go around and you you you're like you tidy up the the last row a little bit um well i say definitely there's always going to be people that won't do that but it can make life a little bit more difficult for the person going along behind with the baler and you don't really want to do that you don't want to set out to deliberately make life difficult for the person on the baler because Ultimately, that person could end up being you. And, yeah, I, I don't want to do that. Right, so I'm sort of thinking with this series, um, the the whole, I, I'm, I'm liking the idea of making proper fields with hedgerows and so on. I, I, I really like that idea up here. So I'm sort of thinking that I would do that. The strips next to the road, I think we will leave those for the council, for, so for whoever's in charge of the roads in this particular part of the world that we're in with this series. I don't know where it is. Could be anywhere. It's, it's some random spot in Europe, I believe. Um, so we've got this area that we'll, we'll start building hedgerows. We'll also do some stone walls as well. I want hedges and stone walls and things like that. There's not actually that many hedge options with the um, landscaping stuff at the moment. There's, there's not actually that many options that we can use, which is a little bit of a shame, I think. I mean, there are some, and we will be helping ourselves to some of those, but... I'm going to have to try... Maybe, maybe I need to start hunting around for a few extra mods if I want hedgerows. Because I kind of like the idea of having some scruffy hedgerows as well. And especially, like, going alongside the road there. I want, like, bushes that stick out a little bit more. Um, things like that. So I'll do my fence line or hedgerow or wall or whatever it is that I'm going to have here. Um, but then I'm going to want something between us and the road. And I feel that that's quite important. I think it's going to make it look a little bit more natural. Just this open space. Yes, there's plenty of places with just open space. I'm not saying that's not natural in any way. But it's not really what you... What, what, it's not really what I'm used to with my farm. Or with any farm that I've worked on. Um, it's always got hedges or fences or something separating your property from the um, the road that's going through unless you're talking about open moorland and just you know, public you know, common land that is being shared by everybody and then the cattle doesn't just go and graze on it. We don't want that. This isn't common land. This is our private land and that's what we need to treat it as. So we'll be wanting something to separate us so I've got ideas for that as well okay let's bring you round I don't think we're going to need very many more passes just here 
think we want once more. Like that. Is that going to be enough? I may have to do a little bit more. So we'll start down here. And we will now do the outside, the, the final run. And see how good I got this. And then we can start our bailing. So the bailing will take a little bit to do. When we come to do this again, because I'm going to plough it up, we will have a better... We'll have a proper field here, which means that what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to use the hired help to do the turning and the raking. We, we can do all of that with hired help. So the only job that we'll have to do manually is the actual bailing itself, uh, which is quite cool. Now, the, since I last played, there's a whole load of mods been added. Lots and lots. I haven't actually added very many to the save just yet, mainly because... Um, I didn't think that we needed them just at the moment. We've got a lot to do, and we don't have very much money to go and buy anything with anyway. Uh, but there is one in particular that I quite like the look of, and it's something that you attach to the back of a baler, or to like you can attach it to a combine, and then it takes power from the combine to the machine. It's a bit like the trail lifter. I imagine several of you will have seen it. There's a trail lifter here somewhere. Um, where are you? Right, it's a bit like one of these trail lifters, except that it also has a PTO on it as well. So it can go onto the back of the combine, has PTO, so it allows you to hitch this on properly to the combine. And then there's a PTO running on it, and you hitch the baler onto that. And then you have another one that goes from the baler onto, say, the Archizan. And you can have it offset as well. So you can have the, the next one offset so that as the Archizan is following around, it's gathering up the bales that go straight off the back of the baler. It seemed like it was a really cool idea. So it's something that I would like to try. And see how that works but i don't know if that's gonna make its way into this particular series or not it may it may not we'll have to wait and see um but anyway right now we need to take this back to our farm and then when we've done that we are going to see right here we do need an entrance way once we've taken this one back we will get our baler Right, so that field right there hasn't been planted with anything yet. That needs ploughing. This is also going to need ploughing. And I only have one tractor. Which is where things are going to... See, I've got a nice plough right there. But this is where things are going to start to take a bit of time. I mean, it's August at the moment, and when would we be planting? Uh, right, we don't actually start planting. I was going to do wheat or barley to start with, I think. I don't remember what I said I was going to do, but I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking wheat or barley to go into that bit, and then I want grass in the other bit. Um, a second tractor would be absolutely divine if i could have that it means that this tractor could concentrate on doing baling stuff because this is a nice powerful tractor and then we can get a smaller tractor to be doing stuff like gathering up bales and and things like that but at the moment that's that's not really going to be an option so we'll run you out i don't think no, that does, that's not actually a hitch on the back of that baler, is it? It's just a thing. But it's, not, it's not an actual hitch, which is a bit of a shame. The ploughing in the field across the road, that is something that we are going to have to do manually. We're not going to be able to just do that. Um, 
with the... Oh, no, I need to unfold it. Uh, we're not going to be able to do that with the hired help. We're going to have to do that ourselves. But because it's going to be... You know, we're in August, so we'll be moving into winter. Because we're going to be moving into winter... I'm not actually all that concerned about getting all of the plowing done. I'm going to use the field that we've got marked out here as our as the edge of our field. And that one will... So just to tell us where the field is. So I'll plow a line around the edge all the way around. Just marking it all out. And then we can do little bits as and when we want to through the winter and we can plant grass first thing in spring if that's how we want to work things out i mean i might not i may end up doing a bit more plowing I, i'm not quite sure at the moment and um, the other thing is like we're going to be wanting to do a bit of decoration and if i'm going to be doing hedgerows and stuff around the outside of this field i can be working on doing that while the hired help is doing the work over in that field over there. And it's quite important to me that hired help does as much work as possible in this. Um, some people have suggested that maybe I should try and alter the hired help so it's not paying any, I'm like not paying any wages, which would sort of represent us doing it. But I kind of figured that, well, we still want to be taking a wage from our even though it's our own farm and you know we, we could sort of say oh well we won't take any wage um we still want to be drawing a wage from our own farm we want to run it like a, a, a proper business so we'd still want to actually be taking a wage from it so i don't feel that that would be a particularly good idea right let's go down there because i started this field halfway round the outside rounds are going to be a little bit weird the only problem I've got with the small baler is that it's so much slower than the if we would get a bigger baler we'll eventually get a bigger baler if we, if we can have something like um, a, a, a well one of the big square balers like especially like I think it's the chrome deep is it the chrome deep act or something like that I don't know the, the one of the big chrome balers that one, I need to have a look now. I need to drool. We're, we're just going to temporarily pause and we're going to drool over the super fast baler that's in here. See, this one does 12. That one does 17. See, straight away, there's already a jump up 17. 5k faster. That one right there, the big pack. Now, that's actually wrong. That's misrepresented right there. That one's faster, the big pack, with these rakes on the front. I actually really like those, and we'll quite possibly end up using one. But if this is the proper big pack, the, the one thing about these balers, these big packs right here, um, they're more expensive than this. And I found out doing some research for the time-lapse series that these big pack ones here the they go faster than normal right they're one of the fastest balers on the market and they are a bit more expensive so you could actually have it going at 25k and it's quite realistic because they are able to go quite a bit faster than just your standard big baler and that's something that i really like about them um the, the speed that you can go racing through the field is is quite impressive so if we could do that, if, if we could get one of them, that's like double what we're doing with this thing. And there's also a lot less bales to pick up. I mean, we do have an autoloader, so we've at least got that bit in our favour. Um, not quite sure what we're going to do with this next. Um, yeah, see, I'm genuinely torn at the moment between doing this field and planting it with grass or doing this field and using it for arable cropping and to start off with using that area there for grass but if we're going to go in for cows we'll want that area there for pudding I mean the 
That's going to be further down the line. The next thing that I was going to do, I, I do remember the first thing that I wanted to do was to get a mill. So that we can mill up um, grain and then turn it into flour. Because the, the flour sells an awful lot better. So here we go up to about 400 with wheat. Similar there, 600 with oat. Um, whereas if we go down to flour right there, it goes up to about 700 with flour. Now, we could also then go and get a bakery later on and turn the bread into, uh, turn the flour into bread so that we make even more money from it. But that's a, a whole production chain that I didn't really want to worry about at the moment. So, yes, I want to I want to work on that and I want to be able to get that and achieve that goal. It's 20,000 for the mill to be able to do that. And that was the other reason that I didn't want to... I think I remember now that I wasn't wanting to go and spend money at the moment. I want to make these bales and sell them straight away in the vain hope that we can get a mill, get a windmill here, and get the money for a windmill going. So if we can have that, we've sort of achieved that first bit of a goal and then we can start going into winter and um, we can get this lot ploughed up and replanted so if we plant this with an arable crop then we've got more that will be able to go through the mill however with grass you take two cuts off of it and you don't actually have to do a lot right we don't need to do anything at the moment if I was to go and buy a roller we could roll this and that would work um, I want to do this series as organic. I always like to play organic farming if I can, and I want to do the same with this one. Um, the Rizu Forest, I'm not playing organic farming, and so I'd really like to do this one as that, which means that we, we don't have any extra fertilizer to go put on anything at the moment, and we won't until our cows are producing stuff. Um, there is a mod that increases the amount of manure and slurry that you get from your animals, and I will have that one. I think that's actually a relatively new one. I think that was one of the new ones that was added um, during my time off. Um, it Basically, at the moment, if you put in two litres of straw, you get one litre of manure come out of it. Um whether you it balances between manure and slurry i'm not quite sure but the mod basically you put in a liter of straw you get a liter of manure come out um so i'm not sure about that because obviously the volume the straw does start to rot down when it becomes manure anyway so you get less volume Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.